Hi, welcome to our second podcast of 2023. Today we're going to be covering a very interesting topic, support and resistance levels. This is an important concept for traders to grasp because it is fundamental to most trading strategies. As always, you can find us on your favorite podcast provider. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Hey, Alison, how are you today? Hey, Chris, I'm doing well. Um, glad the, the kids are going back to school this week, so getting them all their school stuff together, and uh, yeah, I think they've had a long enough holiday. And how are you doing? Yeah, that has been a long holiday. Um, yeah, I'm okay, thanks. I'm okay, thanks. Um, uh, yeah, your kids have had a long holiday. I miss, I miss being a child and having holidays <laughs> that go on for weeks on end. Yeah, me really too. Lucky. Yeah, um, it is. But yeah, no, I'm 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 good. Otherwise, thanks. I'm, I may have some workmen showing up uh, any minute now, so it may get a bit noisy just for our listeners. Uh, but we'll try and edit out uh, the worst of it. But um, yeah, today we're talking about uh, something that I think all traders need to have a grounding in before um, before they get started: which is support and resistance levels. So uh, support and resistance are pretty the two foundational concepts uh, for technical analysis. Um, so if you're going to do any kind of trading whatsoever, you need to understand what these terms mean and how their practical application works. Uh, it's really essential for correctly reading any kind of price chart. And using support and resistance levels to create trading strategy is one of the most basic uh, foundations of, of of trading. They're really important for managing risk, uh, such as placing stops. Uh, it's also really important for determining market conditions and finding the right entry and exit positions. Yeah, support and resistance really are very key aspects of, of trading and, and something a lot of traders use um, for determining all mm -hmm. those different factors. So basically, what, what is support? Um, well, in a downtrend, the prices fall because there is an excess of supply in the market. And basically, the mm -hmm. lower these prices go, the more attractive they obviously become to those waiting to buy the financial instruments. And at some level, because the demand would have been slowly increasing to the level where it matches the supply, uh, it is at this point then that the prices stop falling. And this is called the support. So if you look at a chart, mm -hmm. you will see there's almost the prices are falling and it hits a level and it stops there for a moment. And at that level, then it starts to increase. The price increases because now there's an increase in demand. So it can be a price level on the chart or a price zone. And it is an area on the price chart that basically shows the buyer's willingness to buy. Um, and it is at this level that the demand will usually overwhelm the supply, which basically causes that reverse in direction. Yeah, and the prices will start uh, going back up again once it hits that point. And so that's support. What is resistance? Well, resistance is just the opposite of support. Um, you know, prices will move up. Uh, like using your example there, prices will go back up because now there is more demand than supply. And as prices move higher, there'll come a point when the selling will then overwhelm the desire to buy again. Um, resistance uh, levels happen for a number of reasons. It's often that traders have determined the price are too high, um, or if, you know they've met their they've met their valuation, they've met their target. It's also very often the reluctance of new buyers to come into the market. They they look at the they don't want to open those new positions because they think the price is too high. Um, there's other reasons too uh, why resistance happens, but um, but a skilled trader can clearly see on a price chart um, the level at which supply begins to overwhelm demand, and this will be the resistance level. Uh, and like support, it can be either a price level on a chart or it can be a zone. Um, yeah, so th those are the, those are the, that's the basics of support and resistance. And the beauty of uh, resistance and support is that the more often the price hits that level, then the more reliable that level is to become in predicting future price movements, which is why it becomes almost part of the trader psychology. 
um, or a, a psychological barrier for traders because they will buy or sell once a certain level is reached and they would have recognized those various levels on, on the charts. So this basically strengthens the result and strengthens the chances that that will happen again. So it's a self-fulfilling yeah, exactly. prophecy. Anyways, yeah. yeah, no, it's, um, there's a big psychological aspect to support and resistance. But yeah, they can be they can be really useful for traders speculating on the direction of price, um, and it's also great for quickly determining whether you are correct about the direction of a price. If the price breaks through support or resistance level, you can close your position quickly at a small loss. But if the price continues to move in the right direction, so it respects prior support or resistance levels, you know, so you you know hit you hit uh, the resistance level and you think the price is going to fall again, and you're correct. You know the move may become more substantial, and um, so it's it's really um, incredibly useful bellwether for traders looking to speculate on price. Yeah, and it's it's a very you know as you said earlier, Chris, it's it's um, particularly for beginner traders who are just getting into the game. It's quite a it's it, they're very obvious levels once you understand how to identify them. So there are a few ways to identify them, um, and they they're quite easy to spot. Uh, obviously, it takes a bit of practice. And they can help you choose the right time to enter the market and also where to put your stops and limits. So the first thing traders often look at is historical price data. And uh, this is a very reliable source for identifying support and resistance levels. But you have to familiarize yourself with past patterns. And then some t- and, and not just from patterns um, from years ago. Sometimes you, you familiarize yourself from very recent activity so that you can recognize when they appear again. So the most uh, reliable source for identifying support and resistance levels is historical prices. Um, And it's very important to familiarize yourself with these past patterns and sometimes from very recent activity so that you can recognize them if they appear again. But it's also very important to remember that these past patterns may have formed under very different circumstances or different fundamental factors so they are not always a reliable indicator yeah and and this is i think holds true for all technical analysis is that it can be appended by fundamental analysis at any point so um yes yes just like um, a lot of technical stuff um if the fundamentals change your support and resistance levels can change quickly so historical price data is is pretty good um but not the end all and be all the other main way that you people use to identify support and resistance levels is previous support and resistance levels, which is, you know, similar to what you were saying with historical price data. But they're particularly good for um, uh, for markers for entry and exit points into trade, previous support and resistance, um, as well as indicators of future movement. It's important to note that major support and resistance levels, previous support and resistance levels, are rarely exact figures. So it's usually a zone. Um, of support and resistance. It's unusual for a market to hit exactly the same price time after time before reversing. So, so think of them as zones and, um, and when you and, you know, and they're very good for, as I said, for entering and exit trades yeah. um, when you, when you can, if you can correctly identify these uh, previous support and resistance zones on a chart. Absolutely. And then the other, the other way to identify these support and resistance levels is by using your technical indicators or trend lines. So they provide dynamic support or resistance levels that will move as the chart progresses. And these levels are for different markets will be based on different factors. So obviously being able to recognize which levels are going to impact a market's price, but this can obviously take some time. So it's important to practice identifying support or resistance levels using historical charts and then applying your technical indicators. Yeah, so... Let's have a chat about that. Um, how to identify support and resistance levels using uh, technical indicators on charts. Um, so there's a few ways to do this. The first way is just using, um, you can draw lines through peaks and troughs. So you draw your line. Uh, to do this, uh, you select a time frame, uh, identify the highest peak on the chart, and do the same with the lowest point. That'll be the trough. And then you mark each peak and trough uh, on your chart. If there is a downtrend, the support level will be the lower low peak, and the resistance level will be the lower high peak. Conversely, if there's an upward trend, the support level will be the higher low peak, and the resistance level will be the higher high peak. Um, and this is this is a, probably one of the most basic ways of doing it. And you can do this yourself. You don't need any fancy indicators. 
you can just do it drawing a line, uh, doing drawing a line on the chart. Yeah, drawing those horizontal lines. Um, yeah, it, it's a very easy mm-hmm. way to to identify the support and resistance. Then the other thing to consider when you're doing this is uh, using multiple time frames. So if you're using your support and resistance levels from a previous time frame, then choose a short time frame, for example, 15 minutes. And then you're going to draw the levels from the one hour and four hour time frames on that 15 minute time frame. And if the levels from the longer time frames are very similar or equal to the levels of the shorter time frame, your 15 minute time frame, then these could be considered very strong levels of support and resistance. And they could then confirm your um, ideas about entry or exits or where to set your stops. Yeah, no, it's really important. I always recommend uh, all kinds of technical analysis, jumping around time frames, and uh, to use it to confirm. But in particularly in this case, it's um, it's very useful. The uh, the other one, so another another one of the another way of identifying is using uh, moving averages, which is something I think we've talked about before. Um, moving average indicators are great for identifying support and resistance levels, and they'll be drawn automatically on charts. Um, traders can use moving averages in a few different ways. So you can anticipate moves to the upside uh, when a price line crosses above a key moving average or um, or to exit trades as well when a price drops below a moving average. Regardless of how you use a moving average, it will it will create an automatic uh, support and resistance levels on your charts. And, and it's important to understand the difference in time frames again here. Most traders will experiment with different time, fra- time periods and your moving averages um, to find the one that works best. Um, for whatever you're doing, so if you're if you're scalping or if you're positional trading, I mean that's that's going to change your your moving average time frame uh, substantially. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, as you mentioned earlier, Chris, if you're using trend lines, so trend lines basically show you whether you're in a downtrend or an uptrend. Then you want to make sure that you have at least three peaks or three troughs before you draw your lines, so that you have a usable trend line. And once you've plotted the trend lines onto your chart, your um, your uptrend line will be the support level because you'll draw it underneath those supports, while the downtrend line will be the resistance level. So you'll draw it above the chart, you know, where the candlesticks are. And as with moving average support and resistance levels, that uh, these levels are dynamic as well, so they'll be changing all the time, and obviously will also depend on your your time frames. Yeah, similar to moving averages. Um... Yeah, and it's important, as you say, it's important for people to recognize these are going to be dynamic. They're not going to be fixed. Um, another, I mean, another strategy, I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan of this one, but I mean, it's something that people do. There's trading ranges. Um, uh, some people will like to trade a range. These are areas where the support and resistance levels are relatively close and the price will bounce between two levels for a period of time. This is quite common, especially in forex trading. You'll see price move between support and resistance quite a lot. Um, and some experienced traders will trade within these trading ranges. So one strategy they use is they'll place a short trade as the price touches the upper trend line, so hits the resistance level, and then they'll hit a long trade as the price reverses uh, to touch the lower trend line. This strategy I find can be very risky, as we mentioned before. You know, like fundamentals can can throw your support and resistance levels out the out the window very quickly, and it's usually much better to wait and see see in which direction the price is going to break out of this range, which they will. They will eventually break out of the range and then make sure your trades are placed in the in the correct direction. Yeah, and obviously then you want to set your stops quite carefully if, if that is how you're trading. Another factor to consider is that the more times the price tests a support or resistance level, the more significant that level becomes. So then, so as you said, if the, the prices keep on bouncing off a support or, or a resistance level, then more buyers and sellers will notice and will base trading decisions on these levels, which is where the psychology comes in. And a previous support level will sometimes become a resistance level when the price attempts to move up. And sometimes a resistance level will become a support level as the price temporarily falls back. And this is called a reversal. So sometimes you'll see it'll go up and down between two very obvious support levels and it can reverse too so so that is also something to be aware of yeah um and uh, you know many traders will use these um identified support and resistance levels to tr- choose a- entry and exit points um i think that's probably the most common use of support and resistance 
because these areas often represent the prices that are the most influential, let's say, to an asset's direction. And because so many traders will be confident of these support and resistance levels, there'll be a much higher volume of trading around these levels. And and you, I mean, you mentioned reversals there. I mean, and this is the reason why reversals become so difficult while moving through the support and resistance levels becomes so hard because the trading volume, uh, the trading pressure around it, around these support and resistance levels grows and grows and grows as time goes on. And you mentioned psychology again there, and it's really important for people to realize this, you know, that, you know, financial models, you know, are, they're often portrayed in media as, you know, it's, uh, as rational things, you know, but, you know, so much of trading and so much of our financial system is based on human traders and humans are emotional. They make mistakes and they rely heavily on their own psychology. And and what we're talking about here with support and resistance level is kind of, there's a kind of a group psychology. It's a group think. You know, it's everybody looks, you know, it's confirmation bias. Everybody says, oh, this is a support level or this is a resistance level. And the more people say it, the more it becomes true. As you said earlier, I think, would you call it a, a self a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, and um, and if people were rational, if we were all robots, um, then support and resistance levels wouldn't work. You know, they just wouldn't exist. But uh, but they do. It's because we're all engaged in when traders are all engaged in this kind of group psychology. Yeah, and because we're not robots, using support and resistance levels as a trading strategy is is one of the very basic uh, methods of trading. So it can be used to manage risk and place stops. Uh, it can be used to determine market conditions and, as you said earlier, find appropriate entry and exit positions. And the most common trading strategy is using support and resistance levels um, when you are buying. You know, when, when you hit a support, often traders will buy once they recognize that support and they will often sell once a trade has hit what they perceive is the resistance level. But as you said, traders should wait for confirmation uh, that that market is still following the trend. But that's a very common trading strategy that that a lot of traders employ. And it's probably one of the most yeah. simple trading strategies. Yeah, it's simple, it's easy, and it's very often correct. Um, so you can see why a lot of people do it. Uh, yeah, but um, placing stops and limits below support and above resistance is really important. Um, we've talked about this all the time. Uh, risk management, essential. Risk management 101, really. It, um, this will close your position quickly if the price does break through the support resistance level. Uh, so, you know, before you place your trade, consider your profit target and what you consider to be an acceptable level of loss. And then decide on your exit point um, and place them near the support or resistance level, depending which way you're going. Yeah, very important. Stop losses are an absolute must, and particularly for beginner traders. Um, and mm -hmm. another common strategy that we use in support and resistance trading is the breakout strategy. So traders wait for a price to move outside either the resistance or support level that they've identified. But a breakout is not just a slight movement beyond the support or resistance. It is defined basically by a sudden and very rapid movement with increased momentum which then creates um, opportunities for profit. But these are a little bit more difficult to identify, and particularly for beginners. So um, in yeah. the beginning, I would suggest actually sort of staying within the support and resistance and buying or selling once you've confirmed that the trend is continuing. Yeah, I think, I think that's um, yeah, a pretty good summation of, of the basic trading strategies um, around support and resistance levels. So... So what are we saying here? We're saying, you know, the look, support and resistance levels, they're, they're key concepts for trading, um, and they form the basis of most uh, technical analysis tools. Maybe not most, but, but, uh, but a lot of them. And the support level is the floor under a trading price, and the resistance level is the ceiling above the price. So when prices fall and they test the support level, they will either hold, uh, and the price will reverse to the upside, or that support level will be violated or broken, and the price will drop through the support, and then we'll often continue to next to the, to the next support level. So it's it's a really basic concept, really important to understand. And uh, once you once you get a good grasp of it, um, you're um, you can uh, you can start using it in your day to day trading strategy quite simply. Absolutely, 
And uh, obviously determining these levels of support of, improves the returns of your investment because it gives you an indication of where those prices are likely to stop whether they're resisting at a certain level or they're being supported at a certain level. And uh, being able to see a level of resistance can also be, you know, it can be very advantageous for traders because it'll alert traders to be vigilant as the price approaches that area for a likely reaction in price. As we mentioned, there are several different methods to identify support or resistance. But the goal is always the same. The trader is looking for an indication that the price of a security will likely react in a certain manner as it approaches that recognized price level. Um, well, I think that basically covers our topic for today. If you have any questions, please send them through to podcast at fxscouts.com. Is there anything you'd like to add, Chris? Um, I keep forgetting we have a podcast, uh, we have an email address. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, so people, yeah, okay, you can hit us up at podcastfxscouts.com. You can find us um, on Facebook and Instagram, get in touch. Yeah, and uh, next week, well, I think we're talking about momentum, aren't we? We're talking about momentum trading. We're talking about momentum, that's right, yeah. Momentum trading, which is going to be an interesting one. And I like this, uh, talking about support and resistance, and then we're talking about momentum, because... Um, I think after that, we're going to do a little thing um, on trading psychology. And these kind of lead quite neatly, the sport and resistance and momentum trading will, will lead quite neatly into trading psychology. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and as we said, yeah. you know, often the traders create a self-fulfilling pro prophecy, and this is all based on psychology and, and recognizing these different patterns. Yeah, exactly. No, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, great. Thanks, Alison. And um, I'll speak to you next week. Yeah, cheers, Chris. Thank you.